just joined here today with Simon from Frostcraft Racing Limited. We're here with one of his project cars that he's looking after for a customer. And these guys are based just in Stockbridge. I've been down to their place a few times before, haven't really posted about it, but they do some really, really cool stuff with cars we never see. So I thought it'd be cool to link up with you today and talk about this because I know nothing about it. But it looks really cool. So yeah, what is it? Okay, so this is a Morgan SLR. Uh, it's based on a plus four chassis, super sport. The story of this car that in the early 60s, 62, 63, uh, a well-known name in the Morgan world, Chris Lawrence. Once again, it's the start of the most exciting 24 hours in the sports car world, the great international tussle at Le Mans. I managed to get a very good finish at Le Mans 24 hours. With that success, they managed to raise quite a lot of sponsorship money for an independent team, £10,000 on the day, uh, just to commission three lightweight, alley-bodied, slipstream Morgans. So this is one of three. There's a green one, a red one, and a silver one, which is ironically unpainted because they ran out of time because the other two were either crashed or damaged or just weren't ready in time. Um, as I said, it was a 2.2 engine from the normal sort of TR4 type variant, standard in the day. Uh, these days with historic racing, they're about just shy of 190 horsepower. It's more of a torquey engine, but because of the lightweight and the aerodynamics, we are more competitive than your normal plus four or Morgan traditional shape. Um, so how much do these usually weigh? Coming uh, so we are about, well, just over 700 kilos uh, wow. compared to sort of about mid 800s of the, mm -hmm. the cars, similar cars of that day. Um, like I said, it was all, all developed for Le Mans. I mean, for an independent team, the idea was to bring the fight to uh, Porsche, as in to try and get the 904, they were just putting their might into it, manufacturing, and unfortunately, by a victim of this car, he just couldn't compete. So after being built and developed for Le Mans, ironically, it never actually went. Mm -hmm. However, had a few good results at the Nürburgring, it's a thousand kilometers in the day. Um, as it's been, it's been a race car all its life. It's owned by a gentleman called John Emerson, who's a very keen racer, mm -hmm. historic racer with other Chevrons and vice versa. So it's not been left in a museum, the no. guy, uses it, exactly. does, it, gets used to do a load of work on it to bring yeah. it back up to standard exactly. and goes so racing again. We, yeah, we maintain and prepair. We've rebuilt this car quite extensively over the last couple of years. Um, we're, we typically run in more prestige and the higher mm -hmm. caliber FIA and historic race meetings in Europe. Uh, we, well, the typical race duration, we're about two hours. We've had podiums at the Spa six hours as well. So it's been well campaigned and quite a successful car mm -hmm. um, and yeah as a as a Morgan in this community being the rarity and only three cars it's mm -hmm. yeah it's like the holy grail of the Morgan world well, it definitely looks really cool so yeah. do you want to show us under the bonnet please obviously we've got to make it safe so modern roll cages there's a degree of stiffening we're able to do in the chassis within reason mm -hmm. uh, mainly is because back in the day these cars were frightfully dangerous and um, we've got to make a controlled environment for the gentleman drivers who mm. perhaps have a few more demands and quite <laughs> like a well they obviously their time and their health is quite important really <laughs> so for the sustainability of this industry um, back in the day is like if I die I die oh, break there, my there was a queue of drivers willing to jump in that seat so yep. uh, as I said the other ones were were crashed they were damaged so they raced I mean you can see the battle scars all the way around it's mm -hmm. It's been a racing car all its life, which is quite nice. Come the revolution when John eventually wants to retire from racing, it will carry on, it will be moved on in the mm -hmm. proviso that it will be out there and having the exposure for the Morgans yeah. and such like. So, so what is it like to drive one of these things? Um, well, knowing obviously what Morgans were in the day, uh, they are quite sort of, well, it's quite old fashioned suspension and sliding pillars. Um, they are a little bit harsh but mm -hmm. I think on bumpy roads or uneven ground it's definitely not characteristics for it but now with modern race circuits being so smooth mm -hmm. it's definitely a, like a class of its own I mean you've got to drive these cars sideways just be sliding uh, just if you see cars like a Goodwood Revival stuff like that just drifting around the corners exactly. that's the kind of thing it has to be I mean the Dunlop tyres have been renowned for not offering a huge amount of grip but it's uh, as long as you drive with the anticipation that mm -hmm. it's not going to stop in the same distance yeah. and it's not going to grip and have that same bite as a modern car. Yeah, uh, yeah. you only have your turning point about mm -hmm. a car, car's width on the inside of the curb and you mm -hmm. should 
just about drift to those apexes. Um, so it's all about the experience, isn't it? Like, oh, hugely. Of like driving a car that was racing at Le Mans or yeah. like racing at the Nürburgring, stuff like that in the yeah. 60s. Exactly. So, so uh, in, in some ways, the Dunlop tyres are quite period correct in that. Yeah. But uh, it's nice that they're still being used and they're still, mm. that style of driving still encouraged, really. Mm. Um, with the weight distribution of this one, it's almost 50-50 when it's fully fueled, so mm. it makes it quite a neutral car. And you've uh, got the engine behind the front axle Exactly, as well. yeah, I mean, it's got, because obviously the, the nature of the engine, obviously at the front, we've got a long torque tube and a Moss gearbox in the centre of the car, and obviously a normal Salisbury type axle at the rear. So mm -hmm. it's quite evenly spaced out. The driver's position is quite far back as well. So mm. in all, it's, it's quite a comfortable car. I mean, it's ironically with the reflective bodywork, you can still see very well as well. There's no <laughs> glaring issues, which uh, is normally the normal question, but yeah. But yeah, it's been very well campaigned. We've had a few championships that successes mm -hmm. with it. Um, class wins. It's modern motorsports and arms race though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, competing against Z types and Cobras mm -hmm. does make it a little bit harder. Yeah. But in a in a under 2.5 litre class, we are very very competitive, which is is good. Sweet. So, so what other kind of stuff have you got down at your place? So uh, primarily, I'd say as our as our workshop, our core business is fabrication engineering. So we build monocots for aluminium sports cars, single seaters, anything from sort of the 50s to 80s really, be it Formula One cars, Formula Two, uh, Le Mans prototypes. Uh, we do all the composite work in house as well. Uh, well, the only thing we farm out is spraying because it's obviously mm -hmm. there's people far more talented on that regard. So, yeah. and in this car, it's not really necessary. So, <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. so uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we're tucked out in Stockbridge, which is nice and cool. quiet in the countryside. Um, Obviously, we're geared up for supporting most European events on the lower profile, higher profile ones. So the Spa Classics, the well, Barcelona, Paul Ricard, Dijon, we're regular, regular mm -hmm. contenders there. So. Yeah. So maybe if people enjoy this video, mm -hmm. then we can come down to your place and check out what other cool stuff you've Please. got, because I know nothing about any of this stuff. <laughs> Most but welcome. it seems quite interesting. Yeah. So. We've got a very nice coffee shop just next door to us as well. So you're more than welcome to drop in. Let's do so. it then. Just oh, tucked yeah. in Sandy down, so. Cool, perfect. Well, thank yeah. you much for your time, Simon. Lovely, Take thank care. you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to watch other videos of ours that YouTube thinks you'll like, then click up here. If you'd like to watch some other videos that we have in the same playlist, then click here. And obviously, if you enjoyed the video, then we'd really appreciate if you gave us a subscription. Um, and then obviously, you'll be updated when other videos of ours go live. And you can do that quite easily by clicking here. Hope to see you soon.